How's it going everybody? I hope you're having a good day, and today I'm going to teach you some of the very basics of good old engine. I'm going to start off by just clicking 2D scene over here, and that's going to create a node 2D. This tutorial is aimed at just teaching you the very minimal basics you need to know about good old engine before you can start doing some basic things with it. So then I'm going to start off with by just explaining the node system. Basically, Godot has a bunch of different nodes, and if we go into here, this plus button, we can add another node, and then, as you can see, there's lots of different stuff, and they expand into more and more detailed things. But you're not going to have to use all of these, and they're more just they're basically objects with predefined variables. That can help you make things easier, rather than having to code a bunch of stuff from scratch. These nodes have pre-selected functions already built into them. And as you can see, everything starts off from node. So then, node is the base object, it, it has like no properties. And then if we go down, it branches off into all these other things. And it gets smaller and smaller. There's a different node hierarchy based on where you're going to be creating your own nodes. And each project has the root node. So then there's the root node, which is going to have every other node as its child, and other nodes can have their childs, and it becomes sort of like a tree. The root node is like the roots, and it sort of branches out into trunks, and then branches, which, you know, just keeps on going. You'll learn more about that further on in this tutorial, but for starters, we are just going to click this button over here, attach script, and then we go create. So then, as you can see up here, we've got extends node 2D. This is basically just telling the script what it is attached to, which is a node 2D, because depending on what it's attached to, you can call different functions that are built into the node. And then all of this stuff, you can just go ahead and delete it. And what we're going to do is func ready print hello world. So this is just some very, a very basic script, but I'm going to go in and explain some more of GD script and what exactly it is and how you use it. And it's very similar to a coding language called Python in like structure. So then you can call a bunch of different functions. So then if I were to delete this, we basically declare a function by going func and then we can say something. So we can we can literally do anything and then we put those two parentheses at it. And then how it is you can see it's expecting a colon. So I put that down there and just click enter. That brings us to this line. And as you can see, there's like a little indentation there. And this is important. Because unless we have that indentation there, it's not considered part of this function. So if we go down here and say print hello world, what's going to happen is we're going to get an error because it needs to be in a function. So Pretty much anything you want to be able to tell the game engine to do needs to be in a function. And without these indentations, it won't know whether it's in a function or not. And then if you make, you can have as many functions as you want to, you can do pretty much anything. So then if we do blah 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 plus hello world and save it, run it, there's actually nothing that happens and the reason because of that because none of these were called and then you might be thinking well why was the first time we did this, why did it work? And that's because the ready function is always called at the start, it's like a rule, there's a couple functions that have like, there's a couple names that have like particular stuff attached to them, only a few though. So ready is one of them, and what happens is that as soon as this script is loaded, it is called. So then with this ready script, we can call 
our other methods, which are going to have to be renamed. And then now when we run it, we get two hello worlds. So I'm just going to go ahead, delete all of these, click pass. And then now I want to get into variables. So then with variables, what we do is we just go var. And then we can go h or literally anything pretty much. Variables can be declared outside or inside a function. If it's declared outside a function, then it can be used by any function. So since h is being declared outside a function, if we just set it equal to um, true, and then we go into ready, print h, and then I'm going to call a function that we haven't declared yet. We name this function print h. So I'm going to go down and go func print h. Sorry. And then print h. And that means that we are going to get true two times. But then if we move this over to ready, then what you'll see is that we're not getting any error in the ready function which says print h, but we are getting one in the print h function. So then that's because when you declare a variable in a function, it becomes a temporary variable. And it's only declared until this function is has finished, and then once that happens, the variable is deleted. So then our print h function doesn't have access to h. However, what we can do is we can pass variables between functions. So if print h, we can say it's looking for h. So it needs to have h. And then what we can do is we can pass h into print h. And when we run it, we'll get two trues again. Because what happens is we don't actually have h here. Like let's say we change this to h blah 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 blah. And then we make sure that this is the same h blah 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 blah. And then we print, then we run. We also get two trues. And that's because Let me just zoom in here. Maybe a little too far. And that's because we are passing the variable h, its value, which is true, into whatever. It's just being a temporary variable. And then we've got another variable that takes the value of h and makes it its value. And then we're printing its value, which is the same as h value. So then, normally in coding languages, rather than just var, we've got um, int and float and bool and string. And what these basically are is int is a whole number. So int would be equal to 1 or whatever. Float is a decimal. So ints can't have decimal points, but floats can. And then bool is either equal to true or false. So then if you want to know something like, is my character walking, and have bool walking. And then you, it can, depending on what the character is doing, like let's say they're moving, you can set walking is equal to true. And if they're not moving, you can set walking equal to false. And then strings are words, so it takes little words. So like cat could be equal to a string. And but Godot it uses duck typing. So if you declare a variable and say duck is equal to nine, then what it does is that you just delete this. 
So what it does is, since 9 is a number, it just assumes that your variable duck is equal to an integer. And that's what int is short for, integer, although you probably already know that. And then if we change it to false, then it's going to assume it's a boolean variable, which is what bool is short for. But if we compare it to another variable that isn't of the same um, type, so if we do var number is equal to 9, and then um, we're going to do an if statement here. So that's just checking if something is equal to true or false. If it's equal to false, then it's just going to skip this line. If it's equal to true, it's going to go through it. So let's just say if number is equal. Now you have to use two equals because that's checking if it is a variable. And, but one of them will assign it to a variable, and you can't assign something in an if state. So if number is equal to 9, I'm just going to print hello world. So if we run it, we get hello world. So now what we do is if we check if number is equal to doc, and doc is equal to false, it's a boolean variable. Then we're going to get an error because these two are different types of variables and you can't compare both of them. However, if duck is equal to 2, then it will run, but it won't print hello world because, well, 9 is not equal to 2. And then something else we can do is on, we can do elif statements. So then basically, if the first if statement is not true, so 9 isn't equal to 2, then it wants to check if um, 2 is equal to duck, which is equal to 2. So it will be true. Then we can print duck. So I'm going to run this, and it's going to print duck. But if we change duck to 3, then what's going to happen is we're not going to get duck. Then what we can do is instead of elif statements, we can do else. So if number is equal to duck is equal to false, and 2 is equal to duck is equal to false, then what we want to do is print number. So this time we're printing a variable, so it's going to print whatever value is assigned to that variable, in this case 9. So now we get 9. If we change duck back into 2, we get duck. And if we change duck to 9, then we get hello world. So that's just some absolute basics about Go.Engine. And I will continue this tutorial series, except for it, it will be about making a 2D platformer. So. If you want to end up making one of those, you can follow this series. It will branch into more complex stuff, and I'll be sure to explain everything as I go. So the series I'm making is designed to take you from beginner to intermediate. If you're interested in that, subscribe, like the video, and I will be posting more soon.